Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued two laws for the year 2017 after they were approved by the representatives and shura councils. Law number two for 2017 accredits the Arab Convention to combat crimes of information technology, and law number three accredits the Arab Convention for the transfer of inmates at penal and correctional institutions within the framework of implementing the penal codes, which were signed in Cairo on the 21st of December of 2010. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today the Interior Minister of Tunisia Al Hadi Majdoub, where he conveyed the greetings of the Tunisian President Beji Said Sepsi and his wishes for the prosperity of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people. His Majesty the King also requested him to convey his greetings to the President, wishing Tunisia and its people further prosperity. His Majesty affirmed the bilateral brotherly relations and praised the development of these relations in all fields, especially in security, cooperation, and coordination fields, in which it achieves best interest for both countries. His Majesty welcomed the guests and highlighted that these visits contribute in enhancing cooperation and exchange in expertise various fields. He praised the successful visit of the Tunisian president to the Kingdom of Bahrain last year and the positive outcomes resulted from the visit and the signing of a number of agreements and MOUs that enhanced the relations between the two countries. His Majesty stressed the need for a stronger joint cooperation between brotherly countries in order to overcome all challenges facing the region. He wished Tunisia further progress, security and stability. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Zafriya Palace the Supreme Council of the National Unity Gathering, the NUG, led by Dr. Abdul Latif Al Mahmoud, where they thanked His Majesty for his patronage of the Gulf Unity Convention, which was recently held in Bahrain. His Majesty the King expressed pride in the stances of the people of Bahrain towards their country and leadership, as well as their contribution to the Kingdom's Development March. He welcomed the attendees and expressed appreciation to the President and members of the Committee for their dedicated efforts, which were reflected through their organization of the Convention. The convention was attended by a number of speakers from the Gulf Cooperation Council. His Majesty praised the role of the NUG in serving the country and reinforcing the values of patriotism. He affirmed during the meeting that the people of Bahrain derive their strength from the values of brotherhood, coexistence and moderation. His Majesty the King stressed that national unity ensures the stability of the kingdom, adding that Bahrain has managed to make great achievements and to overcome all challenges thanks to the unity of its people. He asserted that the kingdom will continue its development march.
الله الرحمن الرحيم صاحب الجلالة يطيب لي أن أرفع إلى مقامكم السامي تحياتي وتقدير المشاركين في مؤتمر For his part, Dr. Abdullah Mahmoud expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's patronage of the convention, which he said is evident of his wise vision. He highlighted the importance of the convention in light of the challenges that face the region's security and stability. And Mahmoud said that the Gulf Union faces a foreign interference in the Gulf countries' internal affairs. The convention agreed on forming a general secretariat for the convention, which the NUG will be responsible for, in coordination with the institutions of the civil society. The general Secretariat will be in charge of hosting convention periodically among the GCC countries. He affirmed the NUG's support of His Majesty's efforts to support unity between the members of the GCC as well as his approach to maintain the Kingdom's security and stability. He expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's directives to rationalize the spending of public money based on a consensus between the executive and legislative authorities. Al Mahmoud also recalled with appreciation the efforts of their Royal Highnesses, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the Crown Prince Deputy. Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to achieve sustainable development as well as the goals of His Majesty's reform project. وأعلنتم عن استعداد مملكة البحرين حالا للاتحاد الخليجي وهذا الموقف كان واضحا في دعواتكم المتكررة للمضي إلى الاتحاد وفي جهودكم المستمرة لإنجاز هذه الأمنية التي تشكل آمال وتطلعات شعب الخليج العربي الواحد وتمثل حجر الزاوية لبناء مستقبل هذه المنطقة وهذه الأمة صاحب الجلالة فقد انعقد المؤتمر بمشاركة نخبة من المفكرين والسياسيين من أبناء دول مجلس التعاون وناقشت الأوراق المطروحة محورين محور التجارب الاتحادية الذي شمل تجربة دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة تجربة دولة الاتحاد الماليزي تجربة الاتحاد الأوروبي محور ضرورات الاتحاد الخليجي ومردوده على شعب دول الخليج العربي وقد شمل ضرورات الاتحاد الخليجي والتحديات التي تواجهه الهوية الخليجية الواحدة البعد الأمني والاستراتيجي للاتحاد الخليجي الاتحاد الخليجي سياسيا الجذور التاريخية الموحدة لشعب ودول الخليج العربي الاتحاد الخليجي رؤية مستقبلية وقد أكد الحاضرون على أن الاتحاد الخليجي يشكل أمل وتطلع شعب المنطقة الواحد وأنه بإذن الله تعالى السد المنيع لصد ومواجهة التدخلات الأجنبية في شؤون دولنا الداخلية إنما يطالب به شعب الخليج هو التدرج في تحقيق هذا الأمل والانتقال به وفق خطوات مدروسة من خلال توحيد مواقف دول الخليج العربي الدفاعية والأمنية والخارجية والسياسية والاقتصادية والتجارية أن يبدأ الاتحاد الخليجي بالدول التي تكون مستعدة ويبقى الباب مفتوحا لانضمام باقي الدول إليه حسب جاهزية كل دولة فهو اتحاد على مراحل وبحسب استعداد كل دولة من دول مجلس تعاون الخليج العربي كما اتفق المؤتمرون على تشكيل أمانة عامة للمؤتمر يتولى مسؤوليتها تجمع الوحدة الوطنية بالتنسيق مع مؤسسات المجتمع المدني في دول الخليج العربي وقد قمنا بتشكيل أمانة المؤتمر برئاسة الأخ المهندس عبد الله لحويحي حيث تسعى هذه الأمانة إلى إقامة هذا المؤتمر بشكل بشكل دوري بين دول مجلس التعاون الخليجي إذا أمكن مع تأمين التأييد الشعبي في دول مجلس التعاون 
وما الوثيقة التي تم التوقيع عليها من قبل مؤسسات المجتمع المدني ومواطني دول الخليج العربي إلا خطوة في طريق هذا الحراك الشعبي خدمة لمشروع الاتحاد الخليجي وقد خصصنا ميزانية صغيرة لاستمرار هذا الجهد الوطني صاحب الجلالة إننا في تجمع الوحدة الوطنية نؤكد تأييدنا لجهود جلالتكم لدعم التوجه الاتحادي بين دول مجلس التعاون الخليجي وفي ذات الوقت ندعم توجهكم لتحقيق أمن واستقرار وتقدم وتنمية مملكة البحرين وأيضاً تأييدنا لإنفاذ القانون في حق من أجرم في حق هذا الوطن إقامة للعدل وصونا للحقوق ووفاء بالعهد وتحقيقا للحياة الكريمة لأبناء هذه المملكة والمقيمين على أرضها صاحب الجلالة أنتهز هذه الفرصة لنعبر لجلالتكم عن شكرنا وشكر شعب البحرين بجميع قواه وشرائحه على توجيه جلالتكم بالأمس إلى أن تكون ضوابط وإجراءات ترشيد إنفاق المال العام مبنية على التوافق بين السلطتين التنفيذية والتشريعية واضعين في الاعتبار تقديم الأهم على الأقل أهمية لما فيه صالح الوطن والمواطنين من أصحاب الدخل المتوسط والمحدود خاصة لقد استعشعر شعب البحرين أن هذا التوجيه كان استجابة لنداءات المواطنين والسادة نواب الشعب ومؤسسات المجتمع المدني ومن بينها تجمع الوحدة الوطنية لإعادة النظر في القرار الصادر بإيقاف صرف العلاوة الدورية السنوية المستحقة في شهر يناير 2017 لجميع الموظفين الخاضعين لقانون الخدمة المدنية والموظفين بجميع الجهات الحكومية التي تنظم شؤون موظفيها لوائح خاصة كما كان توجيهكم السامي محققاً للتعاون بين السلطتين التشريعية والتنفيذية الذي نصت عليه الفقرة ألف من المادة 32 من الدستور التي تقول يقوم نظام الحكم على أساس فصل السلطات التشريعية والتنفيذية والقضائية مع تعاونها وفقا لاحكام الدستور. ولا يفوتنا هنا ان نشيد بجهود صاحب السمو الملكي الامير خليفه بن سلمان ال خليفه رئيس الوزراء وصاحب السمو الملكي الامير سلمان بن حمد ال خليفه ولي العهد ونائب القائد الاعلى والنائب الاول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء على جهودهم لتحقيق تطلعات جلالتكم لتنفيذ مشروعكم الاصلاحي. في ختام هذه الكلمه نرفع إلى مقام جلالتكم خالص الشكر وعظيم الامتنان لدعمكم ورعايتكم هذه الفعالية معاهدين جلالتكم السير قدما في ظل قيادتكم الرشيدة ومشروعكم الإصلاحي بما يحقق لهذا الوطن والمقيمين على أرضه الأمن والاستقرار والتقدم والتنمية المستدامة وفق الله جلالتكم وسدد على طريق الخير خطاكم لحفظ البحرين ومواطنيها والمقيمين على أرضها من كل سوء ومكروه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Glebia Palace. His Royal Highness directed to stop Circular 3 for 2017 regarding the suspension of the annual periodic increment in line with the royal directives that all expenditure rationalization procedures must be according to consensus between the legislative and executive authorities. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister ordered to directly pay the annual increment for January 2017 and directed the concerned authorities to take all necessary measures. The Prime Minister directed ministers travel and participate participation in external conferences and meetings must be within limits, saying that their participation should only be approved by the cabinet so as to rationalize spending and to decrease government expenses. In regards to the annual Bahraini Fine Art Exhibition, His Royal Highness commended the role of the fine art in enriching the cultural sector and supporting national talents. He directed that rent restructuring in Asa markets shops must be in line with the nature of the souk. He assigned the Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning to reinforce monitoring in order to prevent any kind of violation. Also during the cabinet meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to continue efforts to achieve comprehensive urban development and expand in establishing and upgrading Bahrain's infrastructure in line with the government's action plan. His Royal Highness also directed to facilitate procedures to attaining permits for urban development plans which would enhance attracting investments and capitals. The meeting referred to the Representatives Council Draft Law 353 of the Penal Code with the government's response. The cabinet approved a proposal to establish a mini market in Isa Town in line with the government's approach to establish small markets in all residential areas. The meeting also discussed a proposal presented by the Representatives Council in regards to the kindergarten situation of the children of families of limited income. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace the Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah, Speaker of the Shura Council Ali Saleh, their deputies, and the Chairman of the Representatives Financial and Economic Affairs Committee. His Royal Highness praised the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that the control and procedures of rationalizing public funds should be based on the compatibility between the executive and legislative authorities. He also briefed the representatives and Shura speakers on the measures taken by the government in regards to the royal directives. His Royal Highness stressed the need for an enhanced cooperation between the two authorities in order to benefit the kingdom and its people. He praised the role of both councils in, delay, in dealing rather, with national issues and challenges from a parliamentary perspective. He also stressed that the next phase requires more efforts and stronger coordination to achieve the best for the kingdom. The attendees expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and for his keenness to strengthen the parliamentary cooperation. They praised his efforts to serve the Kingdom of Bahrain and highlighted that His Royal Highness created full partnership and joint decision between the executive and legislative authorities in which it represents a mark of success of the Parliamentary March of Bahrain.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, the chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed appreciation for the national efforts and integration between the public and private institutions, which has contributed in building the Amharag Model Youth Center according to the latest international standards in constructions and in a short period of time, as well as the use of energy conservation and management technologies. His Highness affirmed that these efforts are aimed to benefit Bahraini youth in accordance with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, he pointed that the center will be an edifice to embrace Bahraini youth to direct their energies towards serving themselves and the economic development in the kingdom. He also added that the center was built in order to offer many courses and workshops for the benefit of the youth, in addition to professional programs in various fields which pave the way for enabling them to explore new opportunities as well as prepare new generations capable of innovation, creativity and leadership. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed his joy with the Muharraq Model Youth Center, which was inaugurated last Saturday. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the center. He stressed that the center translates the wise leadership's directives in supporting the youth and sports movement in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness lauded the efforts of His Highness. Sheikh Nasser, which aimed to continue the vital development of the youth and sports sector, which achieves the high standards of success set by His Highness's strategy for the development of the sector. His Highness Sheikh Khalid stressed that the efforts of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs under the leadership of Hisham bin Hamad al Jodar, through programs and activities that embrace the youth, we create an ideal atmosphere for them to launch their creativity in various sectors, contribute to achieving the Minister's aspirations and goals, which are in line with the visions of the wise leadership and the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and creating a Bahraini youth that is capable of developing various sectors of the kingdom. He pointed out that the center will be a turning point for the local sports scene. He also congratulated the citizens of Mharag Governorate with the opening of the Mharag Model Youth Center, which is considered to be an educational minaret that lights up the governorate and a new beginning to all youth to practice various sports, social and cultural programs, which grants them wide spaces to launch their creativity and refine them, making them active members in society who will contribute to the development of our dear nation. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today the Tunisian Minister of Interior, Al Hadi Majdoub, and his accompanying delegation, who is currently visiting the country. Present was a number of senior officials in the Ministry of Interior, as well as the Tunisian Ambassador to Bahrain. The Minister of Interior welcomed his Tunisian counterpart and delivered a speech in which he highlighted the Bahraini Tunisian relations that keep developing under the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Tunisian President Beji Said Al Sebsi to achieve mutual goals for both countries and people. The Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid stated that this visit allows to activate the Security Cooperation Agreement, which was signed between Bahrain and Tunisia on the 27th of June of last year. He hailed Tunisia's efforts in supporting Arab security through its good relations with all Arab countries, noting that the next meeting of the Arab Interior Ministers will be held in Tunis next March under the chairmanship of Bahrain. He also commended Tunisia's efforts to combat terrorism and to establish peace and security through cooperating with other countries, adding that it overcame the repercussions of the Arab Spring thanks to to the wisdom of its leadership and the awareness of its people. The minister wished the Tunisian delegation a pleasant stay in the kingdom. The meeting discussed issues of mutual interest and both parties agreed on forming a joint committee to set priorities. In the framework of activating the security agreement signed between the two brotherly countries for his part, Tunisian Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to his Bahraini counterpart for the reception, adding that cooperation and coordination between the two countries will benefit both countries and people. He also expressed his wishes of further success and development to Bahrain. Today, the opening of the 2017 inaugural Middle East Refining Technology Conference organized by the World Refining Association took place at the Ritz-Carlton for the first time in Bahrain, held under the patronage of Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Oil. Hiba Abdel Ghaffar brings us the details in this report. This morning at the Ritz-Carlton in Bahrain was the kickstart of the inaugural two days Middle East Refining Technology Conference, which has always been an excellent platform to unite senior oil refining and petrochemical professionals with industry suppliers. The event was held under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who was pleased by this new flagship event for the Middle East, hosted in Bahrain for the first time. This is uh, the inaugural event uh, happening for the first time in the region. It's called the Middle East Refining Technology Conference. 
Uh, it, it used to be set up uh, in Europe uh, and Asia for the first time it's coming to the Middle East and its main focus is on uh, refinery technologies. Babco is about to start its expansion project which is based on the latest technologies. The event attracted 248 attendees from 21 countries, addressed through a conference held by keynote speakers from OPEC and the largest petroleum companies in the Middle East, sharing their extensive experiences and unlocking opportunities in the region's downstream refining sector in a global context. Papka's Deputy Chief Executive of Refining and Marketing, Ibrahim Talib, was proud of the company's great contribution in the event. Babco has been focal point in terms of bringing it and really uh, the interest in here in Babco and for the whole of the uh, oil and gas uh, entities in the Gulf is to really to share best practices, look at the technologies, the advances at that moment in time, look at the reliability issue, look at the cost savings as well and the and, uh, automation uh, initiative that we have. The number one refining event for Saudi, Bahrain and Kuwait's markets was organized by the World Refining Association, currently operating in 18 countries, choosing Bahrain to utilize their 20 years experience to focus on improving refining and production yields, becoming more sustainable and creating collaboration to reduce costs and optimize revenues. The reason why we've organised this is because we are producers of the ERTC as well, uh, which is what we have in, in Europe, and we wanted to expand our, our network into the, into the Middle East. So this is our first one that we've done here. A well-organised exhibition was a great platform, bringing the industry players from all over the world, stimulating innovative discussions about the attraction and retention of today's millennials from crude to chemicals and enhancing competency levels. And nevertheless, the opportunities, challenges and pitfalls in order to draw benefits from knowledge sharing and best practices of an industry game changer. And we came from Houston, Texas because we feel we wanted to first of all learn about what's going on in the industry, but then again uh, meet people that have a, a really thought leaders in the industry and in how their issues are our issues so we can help them solve them. 248 attendees from 21 countries, all here in Bahrain in the inaugural Middle East Petrotech Exhibition and Conference, in deep synergy aiming to enrich oil and gas activities in the region. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffar.